personal page. Okay, and we'll share it to this page. Just like we're live. We're okay. We're here. Ten seconds in. All right, are we Got a little bit. Yes. <laughs> All right. Are we on? We're on. Okay. Right. Hey. Hey. I'm Deb. Good morning. <laughs> Good to see you, Kyla. We're here for our part two. Yes. Of teaching y'all how to run your business in Texas. So we're going to wait for some people to get on. Yep. So how are you this morning? I'm good. Good. I'm good. Very good. Very good. Happy to be here. Did you get caught in bad weather last night? Um, actually, we did. I Stella and I were at fun. the mall, mm -hmm. and she's playing outside in the play area. Like the torrential downpour came down. And I feel bad. I laughed so hard because her her face of fear was like, Aww. you know, it's just like normal playing, and then it just like came down some torrential. Some things. I mean, you have to laugh, and then you're like, oh, I'm not laughing. Or then yeah. you, you know, you, you they get in trouble, and you laugh, and you have to not do that too. So it's it's hard. It's hard. Mom. Easier said than done. Yeah. So, so yeah, um, we're here. Yeah. Glad to so, be here. So um, last week, yep, we talked about things to know getting started. Yep. And so the foundation, the, the foundations, the basic things you know, the entity you are, um, how you pay yourself, how you report your taxes. So today we're going to move on. We're going to assume that we're we're in business um, and we're growing because we want to grow and we want to make money and have profits. Yes. And at some point, you realize you can't do it by yourself. Delegate, right? delegate. You need, help, delegate. You need a team. Kyle said, "Do the team." Yes. Um, and so your team can involve a lot of different things. Yes. If you bring Kyla and I on, we're your team, right? Right. So there's your foundational team, mm -hmm. obviously, that helps you get your business going, and you know your your administrative team, mm -hmm. which helps you internally with just the day to day mechanics of your business, mm -hmm. and then you have your workforce. Right. And so today we really want to focus on how you create that workforce. Mm -hmm. And um, one of the biggest misconceptions, and I hope we touch on this today, okay. is whether or not somebody working for you is an employee. Or a contractor Huge and I kind of laugh because I've gotten <laughs> into like major debates with my clients over this mm -hmm. and they're like no 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 they're contractors yeah they will and, argue with you yeah in hopes to get some tax benefits mm -hmm. and, and not have to pay employment yeah. taxes which are you know dreaded by most employers so, you know what if you hire me or Kyla to help you um, would you please trust us? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> You're, we know what we're doing. You're paying us because we know what we're doing. So we're going to like free though. today. Yeah, we're free it's advice, advice, people. Um, yep. The reason that people want all of their workers to be independent contractors mm -hmm. is because it's super easy. Yeah, it's so easy. You just write them a check and you're good to go. Um, the problem is you cannot do that, and if you get caught, the penalties are huge. So we do not want to be doing that. So let's talk about um, it's time to bring somebody on. Okay, so you have you have you have us. You can call when when you need us, but you need somebody to help you regularly. So let's say you need to. The first thing you do is decide what do I actually need help with. If you are say a wedding planner, and you just need someone to show up on the day of the wedding, that's different, right? It's if a contractor. You need, yeah. So if you need somebody to show up every day um, and answer phones, um, help you with your emails help package products to be shipped, right? Mm -hmm. um, they're in your place of business. You are telling them what to do. That is not a contractor. It makes your life easier to say they are, sure, but they're not. And I want to look at this from both sides today because as self-employed people, sometimes you get on the wrong side of this when somebody treats you as a contractor and you don't realize it. I get a lot of people who show up to do their taxes and they have a 1099, so no taxes were withheld during the year. They didn't really realize what was going on, and now they're hit with this huge self-employment tax because there's no deductions to take because they were actually working for somebody else. That's the part, right? So the employer gets off of having to pay those employment taxes, Passing but the, the 1099 contractor has to pay those taxes as income, mm -hmm. and it's, it's, it can it's be, shocking it can be really to some people. It can be rough. And so, and so, what are your options at that point? They have two options. One, they can report the person, the, the employer, it's an um, audit, and, and it's, they get in yeah. trouble. But then they lose the job. And sometimes they really like the job. Right. Um, and so, it's it's an awkward situation. So, the the, the, the problem there is the employer. So, let's talk about that. Um, so, I want to back up just yes. a little bit. So, um, a lot of people don't realize this, but when you do make that decision to bring on a contractor or an employee, please seek an attorney, uh, whether it's me or another business attorney, 
and have them draft up an employment agreement or an independent contractor agreement to outline your expectations of this individual for your company mm -hmm. and to outline non-solicitation provisions, non-compete provisions if applicable. Mm -hmm. So you are now deciding you want to grow your business mm -hmm. and you're going to open up your business treasure box to mm -hmm. somebody who is, you know, n not you. And that per you run the risk of that person not being honest with the confidential information that's being conveyed to them. So put your uh, documentation together, get your employee to sign, negotiate vacation, negotiate maternity leave. Everything that is involved with employment needs to be in writing and signed before the employment starts. Even if it's your friends you're bringing on. Especially, Especially if it's your friends or family. Yeah. Don't hire your family, number one. Don't do it. It's, it's not a good idea. Or friends, really, because sometimes that ends up really kicking. Just have clear expectations. And one of the things that that document should include is how you separate from that employee yes um, because there are laws that that, yes. that apply to firing somebody you know and then just another add-on to that and we get two in the weeds with employment agreements if you do need one call me I, I draft them regularly I custom draft them based on my clients business yeah, so Kyla will talk you through what you need to be yeah, thinking about so don't too. get on legal zoom and get an employment agreement I'm like dog in legal zoom all the time but like seriously get one that's customized to your business what confidential information are you going to be sharing let's specify it let's make sure it's protected so um, I also like to tell employers if your employee is in violation of the agreement notice them in writing and give them a copy of it you need to give warnings before you fire somebody. absolutely Yes. So, um, yeah, so... Um, so you've got the employment agreement. Kyla and legal zoom yeah. like me and TurboTax. <laughs> <laughs> we that. hate them. Um, okay, so... So um, you've got the employment agreement or independent so contractor. We're bringing so, yep. so, so you need to... So we're deciding if someone is an employee or an independent contractor. Okay, so if you hire somebody, we talked to last week about yep. if you are a sole proprietor, you are the business, so you are not an employee of your business. You are the business, so you pay yourself with a draw, which is like being an independent contractor. You yes. just write yourself checks, and then you pay yourself employment tax. Right. You know, you, you do that. Um, if you are a corporation, or if you are an LLC taxed as an S corp, you have to have permission from the IRS. You can't just decide that. Yes. Um, then you are an employee of your own company, so your own payroll. Yes. Okay. So let's apply that to who you're hiring. If you're a self, if you're self-employed, sole proprietor, you can have employees. Yes. You're just not an employee. Yes. Um, so when you bring somebody on, if they are an employee, you are responsible. Think about when you, when you are an employee, when you have a W two pay. All of your onboarding paperwork <laughs> that you filled out. Yeah. You're, yeah. Yeah. Your uh, W four. Um, so as an employee, your employer takes out your income tax withholding based on what you tell them. Correct. They also take out seven point six five percent of your paycheck for your self social, social security and Medicare tax. Okay. So the employer has this money. They match it with another 7.65%. So your employer is actually paying a little bit more than you are getting in your paycheck. Then they give that money to the IRS. They file quarterly tax reports. Yep. There's a lot to it. And if like 10 years ago, it was really complicated. But now there's so many resources to help you. It makes it really easy. But you have to do it, okay? Um, now, as an independent contractor, we yep. talked about you just write a check, right? And then they deal with it. So here's the it's problem. Like you pass it on to them. You're yeah. passing it on to them. So yeah. here's the problem. Um, several years ago, people figured this out, yeah. and employers started doing that. Well, yeah. everybody's a contractor. Everybody's a contractor. Especially and, in the oil and gas industry. Oh, my gosh. Oh, so, God, that was so, so bad. <laughs> so the IRS figured it out, and they said, no, mm -mm, we're not going to do that. And so they started started auditing these companies yeah. and saying, no, these guys are actually independent contractors. Yeah. So now you owe tons and tons of money in penalties, and you're going to owe the back payroll taxes, and you're going to do all of this stuff. Um, yeah. And so, so the IRS is watching it now. So there are a series of... Um, guidelines yeah. to determine if someone is an independent contractor. The or tax anybody. code so, provides a series of factors. Yes. So for let's, you. let's let's play a little game, Carla. Okay, I'd love so, it. Um, love I it. have I'm I'm the wedding planner, right? And I'm hiring somebody to show up on the day of the wedding, um, follow me around and do things, and then go home. I only see them every couple of months. Employee or contractor? Contractor. Okay. Um, I have um, my best friend is going to come over and help me package um, products to go out. I'm telling her what she needs to do. I'm telling her this one goes here, this one goes here. I want you to do it in my way. Are and you telling me what time to be there? Yeah. And you have some expectations for me yeah. to stay? Yeah, and it better be like I want it. 
So it's kind of like you're controlling me a little bit. I am. Even Sounds though you're like, my best friend, I'm, I'm telling you what I need you to do for my business. Yeah, I'm an employee. You're an employee. Even like, literally, if you I'm going to say it again. Once in a while. That situation in so many, you know, circumstances that I've dealt with with clients, they think it's in a contractor because of their relationship with the person. Mm-hmm. Please do not think that. Yeah, it, that's no, not how it works. No, no. Um, you hear the word that Kyla said, control. Yes. That's, that's the key word. Are yes. you controlling what they're doing? Yeah. Now, let's say um, I have those packages um, I have a bunch of products, mm-hmm. and you come by and pick them up, go back to your house, you package them up, you take them to the post office, and you call me up and say, it's done, I'm going to send you the receipt. Contractor is, or employee? That, that's more in line with contractor. That's a contractor. I give you an assignment, it's on and your you figure terms. out how to yeah. do it, okay? Um, you just let me know it's done. Yeah. So I'm not another controlling one, how it's done. Another one that comes up pretty often with my construction clients, well... We have multiple jobs and we just use them as needed and they wear our company shirt only because we don't want them to get confused with, with other people. <laughs> okay. So we wear a company shirt. Mm-hmm. They do drive a company truck, but it's only because they don't have another vehicle. Oh, okay. um, but I mean, they, they can take days off if they need to, um, you know. They're an employee. They're an employee. Like as much as you want to dice it up and make it seem like eh, it's, it's just a it's just a company t shirt, yeah. it's just a company car. You're exercising control over this individual. And the threshold question I ask my business clients are: Would this individual be able to go out and do other work independent of your company? Which is the next point I was going to bring up. Without your control. Mm-hmm. Nine out of ten times, the answer is no. Yeah. Um, so let, let's let's continue that point sure. then. So we mentioned um, your friend coming over and getting getting your stuff to ship them out. You get a virtual assistant. VAs are super, are really popular right now. Yes, they are. Um, and so you have a virtual assistant. You say I want her. And I need one of these guys. I want her to call people back for me because I don't like to talk on the phone. Um, <laughs> and I want her to just call people back um, and make appointments and things like that. Um, but. Um, she's I could just call him whenever and she also does this for numerous other people she's a contractor she's she clearly a self-employed yes. individual and I'm her client yes okay yes. so that's the, that those are the main differences I think that's pretty I mean there's like a list but that's pretty much sums it up it sums it up and, and I think sometimes the list is more confusing than just having right. this discussion with my clients I just mean be real, just be you know use some common sense and be honest and be about honest it. so the common try to cheat. the common sense part is less of the problem than the honesty some people, part it's, it's, it's like oh well, yeah some people i mean you can't fix stupid and i'm sorry about that but the the you trying to hide it is not worth it if it comes down to you getting audited yeah and those taxes it's and the huge. penalties that you're going to have to pay from a retroactive mm-hmm you know, tax, it's just, it's yeah. enormous. And yeah. it can take a business down quick. And people all, you know, and the, okay, that's, let's talk about that too. The yeah. other thing is, um, you are collecting payroll, um, you're, are you paying someone payroll, you're collecting the taxes, you're not doing a really good job of paying them in, you're not doing your quarterly report, you're not doing the annual report. The the biggest, when the IRS audits people, there's, there's two divisions, there's individuals, they're gonna audit me personally and you know, or they audit company payroll taxes. That's the hugest thing. There's whole divisions of the IRS that do nothing but audit payroll taxes. This can take a company down, okay? Yeah. Now, there are numerous, okay. numerous uh, services today that make it really easy to do payroll, okay? Yes. There's no excuse not to do payroll. And it's it's more than QuickBooks. I mean, you you introduced me to Patriot, yes. Gusto. Yes. Um, there's a bunch. There ADP. If you're a bigger company, a lot of these. Um, let's say you, you'll say you're hiring three or four people now. You're getting you're getting bigger, and you're on payroll because you're a corporate. You're an S corp. Yep. Um, you can be some of these biz, some of these um, services can offer benefits. They can offer um, insurance. They yep. can offer retirement plans. So there's a lot of services, and they don't cost that much. I mean, they really don't. Yeah. So just consider that cost of doing business. If you say, I'm going to pay somebody $2,000 a month, it's actually going to cost you $2,200 a month. You know, um, So you have, to ca- you have to calculate that in. It's worth it. Yeah, don't take the cheap road. And, and try to mask your employees as contractors. Yeah. It's it's just the, not worth the, the risk. The penalties are too much, and you know, sure, there's a chance you won't get caught. 
Sure, there's always that chance that you cheat on your taxes, it. you don't get caught. But you could get caught, and it's not worth it's not the pretty. risk. Mm -mm. It's not worth the risk. No. Okay. So um, I hope that everybody, if, if there's anything that you're unclear about on this, please you know, drop a comment, um, message me, and I will be happy to, to answer it further. Kyla will answer any yep. legal ramifications. What other legal things you need to think about? So another thing, and I, I just met with clients yesterday about this. So like phase two of growth. So you talked about four employees, and that's kind of a, it's funny you mentioned that, that's a buzz number for Is me it? and my clients, <laughs> yeah. So when my clients have hired four employees, the next advice that I give them is we need an employee handbook. Okay. And the reason is. Not um, till four though? It, it's not, I mean. I get like an in official a, handbook. In a perfect world, I would love the client to come in and do handbooks and do employment agreements and all of it. Mm -hmm. But we have to also be realistic from a cost perspective. True. A new business isn't True. wanting to spend all of their profits at a law firm, and I don't want you to. Mm -hmm. So we can be very crafty with our employment agreements for each of your employees until you get to a place where you're comfortable paying additional funds to your firm. But, I mean, again, Perfect World would love the whole package, but the, the four employees, to me, puts you in a position to where you're gonna have fleet insurance if you have vehicles, likely. Okay. So you're gonna need a very firm vehicle policy in place. No drugs, no smoking, you know, no drinking, all, all of these things. And then- So don't just assume that people won't drink and drive if you need them. Oh God, <laughs> please don't assume. Um, please, don't assume. please, please, please don't assume anything. Just <laughs> ask and make sure before you assume. But so the employee handbook is an extremely in-depth policies and procedures manual as to how your business is going to be ran. And it gives an employer an additional layer of protection for retaliatory suits, employee claims, um, again, in line with noticing if there's issues in violation. But when your employee is hired, they sign an acknowledgement of their receipt of that handbook and it binds them to comply with the terms in that handbook. So I love drafting handbooks. Um, my nerd is showing big time <laughs> and I'm proud of it. Um, I love drafting handbooks because I think it's important to be communicative with your employees. Communication goes a long way in all of your relationships, but especially with your employees. They need to know what the expectations are, and you need to be clear it helps about it. Them too. Yeah. It's very symbiotic, and it's it's mutual because your employees will likely perform better if they know what the expectations oh, yeah. are, and if they don't, you notice them and get them out the door and start fresh. Last piece of advice: don't hang on to that employee that is causing you to lose sleep at night. That's hard. It's hard. It's hard. It's hard. Also, chat, you gotta protect yourself. Yeah, chat with Deb and or me before you do let somebody go, just to make sure you understand your obligations of when you need to submit that last paycheck. That's and, under the law too. Yes, and what you need to have in writing when you're terminating somebody. Yeah. So, And, and I, I, always, I always tell people, we live in a culture that is so happy, and it oh, makes me crazy, yeah. but it's like the American way, let's sue somebody. And so, um, employees can come back and sue you. I mean, yeah. it's awful. And, and then there's think, the unemployment. Yeah, and I think it also needs to be said that filing a lawsuit is not as glamorous as it looks on TV. <laughs> so I literally cannot watch law shows because I'm like wrong. You know, they like pull That's out they works. like pull out a piece of paper and they're like, and then this was discovered. It's just not that way. So um, it's it's, it's not? no. No, I, love I would be shows. so. Have I, mean, I been lied to you? Yeah, all these years? I my life would be so order. much cooler if it was like suits, but it's not. <laughs> so, um, it's costly. It's very time prohibitive. So you're looking at anywhere from one and a half to two years, anywhere from twenty yeah. to one hundred and fifty thousand um, dollars, and that can be. Uh, there is no limit to legal fees. So if you've got corporation Especially versus corporation. Suit where they're just coming after you just to be paying. And then add in the mix, we've got the COVID delays. So, uh, yeah. you know, when you feel like a lawsuit is in your best it's interest, so call me and I will tell you why it's likely not. Um, and then if it absolutely is as a last resort, then it is what it is. But, you know, I'm, I'm a huge right. proponent of trying to settle disputes, trying to resolve any you, of these you disputes. Do I do mediations. I do them here at my office. 
Another attorney that works in my office, Claire, does mediations regularly. We have several mediators in our county that are incredible. But, you know, point is, have things well drafted. So you're speaking of the, the, the perspective of the person doing the lawsuit, but the perspective of the person receiving the lawsuit, yes. you're saying we can hit it off by having the handbook, by having the yes. agreement, by having everything documented before you fire yes. somebody. Your case um, is so much stronger as an employer mm -hmm. if you have your ducks in a row. Also, and I didn't mention this, I've been talking about the IRS because that's where my focus is, but Texas, um, we talked about last time, Texas versus federals, mm -hmm. um, you you're, you're, um, have payroll obligations to Texas, and one of those is you're paying into the unemployment system. Yes. So if somebody, if you fire somebody and they can file for unemployment, um, if they get it um, against you, your mm -hmm. rates go up. So all of this can help protect you in that case yes. too, where someone says, hey, they fired me for no reason and I want to get unemployment. You can defend yourself. You can respond and to can your say, claim. Mm, no, yes. no, you had you had warnings. You had yes. you did not choose to do what you were supposed to do. So a perfect response looks like attached is a copy of our employee handbook. Mm -hmm. Attached are the notices that were provided to the employee prior to termination, mm -hmm. and this was not wrongful. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, so what about, uh, um, I might just went like, what about, okay, moving on. So we're, we're covered employees. Another yes. thing at this stage that people, speaking of lawsuits, what do you do, Kyla, um, when people aren't paying you what they're supposed to pay you? You're a business owner, you send out bills, people aren't paying. What are your, what are your, um, It's a huge options? issue. It is. So, um, first and foremost, always have an agreement in place with the person that you're working with, obligating them to pay what you agreed on. So for me, I use an engagement letter. Deb does the same thing. So you know what the expectations are as a consumer to pay and vice versa. Mm -hmm. So I have gotten better about this. Um, I'm, I'm in We're all a work in progress. I'm a decade guys. in, so I'm getting a little bit better um, about not continuing to work if I'm not getting paid. Um, <laughs> but. I start with, I do a series approach. So I send an invoice, wait for the due date, it doesn't come due, I send an email reminder, still doesn't come due, I send a letter. Generally for me, it's resolved by then, but. Well, you're an attorney. But if not, um, I would send a termination of services letter outline, you know, it, assuming we're not in litigation. Especially if it's an ongoing litigation. engagement. It, especially if it's an ongoing engagement. You need to stop it. And, you know, for you, it, it's it's, you know, more heightened and for other service industries, send that demand letter and then cease doing work. Cease doing work for free. And then if absolutely necessary, you can file a lawsuit to collect your damages. And then I also am a proponent of mediation. You know, a little bit paid on an unpaid invoice is better than nothing. Yeah. So, you know, but- So you're settling for something. That's you're settling for something. But, you know, at the end of the day, too, another thing to think about, and this is just practical business advice, take a deposit or a retainer. Yeah. I don't do any work without money. Or some cushion to give you payment up through a certain point and then send that first invoice and you're going to tell a lot about what kind of consumer you're dealing with on how that first invoice is paid. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, again, um, I think I think a problem. I think and I hate to be sexist, but I think women have a bigger problem with trust. We trust everybody. We want to believe that our employees have our best interests at We're heart. Like we want to helpers. believe that our yeah, we want yeah. to believe our clients are good people, and most people are. And I sure. like to I look for the best in people. Sure. But you also have to protect yourself and understand that not everybody is a good person. Not everybody totally. is, is is going to join your business with the intention of, of helping you grow your business. Cut the fat, move on. And it's hard. And then just bouncing off of that, I don't know how much time, we have a little bit of time left. Um, reviews, business reviews. So, oh, oh gosh, yes. uh, Yeah. That's that's a really sad thing right now. It's sad. You've got these nuisance reviews that people are just, I see a lot with photographers where people post and say, oh, it was just the worst experience ever. This person was horrible, the picture was horrible. The photographer never even met the person. So I get a lot of calls from people and they're like, we want to go after them for defamation. Um, again, I give my spiel on how non-sexy lawsuits are. <laughs> and usually they're kind of like backed off from then. Um, I have a two-prong approach of, for advice that I give people on reviews. Generally, nine out of 10 times, the review itself 
an objective person reading the review will realize the consumer is kind of off. Mm -hmm. Not, I, not well. When, when, I, when I'm going to purchase something and I read reviews, I always look at, I don't just say, oh, zero stars. I say, why? And, and a lot of times you'll be able to tell, well, this is a fluke so or bad, obviously this is not. They're, these people are crazy. And everyone has a bad transaction. Yeah. I mean, it's just natural. Mm -hmm. So to expect perfection from the person yeah. that you're working with is something, you Do know, it's not unreasonable. expect social media to help you with this either. No. They, they will not. Um, I have, I have a, one of my, one of my other businesses, I have a really bad review on Google. Yeah. I never met the person. She had a beef with my daughter um, and, and put a bad review. I went to Google. I have friends who went to Google and said, Did you this respond not, to the review? I did not because the person's crazy and I wanted okay. it to just go away. But ordinarily, you need to so, respond. That's my second problem with the approach, mm -hmm. um, apart from your situation. And that's why <laughs> I did it because I didn't want to keep her going. I advise my clients to, and I'm, I'm used to helping with drafting this response, putting together an honest and accurate response. Sometimes that response is, I'm really sorry. Like I said, when we were ending the transaction, this was a really, you know, it was a mistake. I took responsibility. I here's, refunded here's, the, here's what I did to try to make yeah, it I right. refunded the money. And da, da, da. People want to see that if there was a mistake made, that you tried to do something yeah. about it. You and, know? And usually people are good with that. And then let it go. Do not well, get defensive. Yeah. Do not get accusatory of that person. Oh, Lord, yeah. Then you just end up looking bad. Yeah, and then let it go. Take the high road. Yeah. Let that review go. And work hard to get five great reviews to just put that review in the back burner. Yeah, and and, and um, don't expect people to just give you a review. Some people do, but ask them. Sure. Ask them, send them the link. Would Especially you, if you it know, was a good, I loved smooth working with transaction. You. I loved working with you, we had a great experience. Would you mind putting a review on Google? Would you mind putting a review on my Facebook page? Yep. And most people will, they're really happy to do it. They just don't yep. think about it necessarily. Right, right. You only think about it when you get the bad one. I know. So, um, but, but you know, if, if your only review is a bad one, then yeah, it looks pretty bad. But if, if you have, you know, a hundred good ones and one bad one, people are just like, yeah, yeah, yes. yeah. things happen. I feel like we covered a lot we of covered a solid lot. We really stuff. Did. Okay. So I was um, talking to my best friend from mm -hmm. law school on the way here this morning and she's like, I love your videos. Like I want to record them. I learned so much. And so I hope that you guys learned stuff too. Um, I appreciate her watching and at least learning. <laughs> <laughs> we know one person watched. Yay. Thanks, Tara. <laughs> <laughs> but again, we'll, we'll put the, the replay up. Yep. We'll share it all over the place. So if yep. you miss it, you can, you can, or you want to watch it again, take notes because we give you lots of good information yep. here. And we're both here to answer questions. Mm -hmm. We mm -hmm. love answering questions. We're patient. We're informative and all things that you are looking for in your yep. business village. Yep. You need to know things. We know things. So. Yep. Good. And if we don't know, I'm not afraid to say I don't know. And, and I will look, look it up. And I will look it up. You know, <laughs> it's another thing. You I know? love research. I will look do it not up. be afraid if a professional working for you is like, you know, I don't, I don't really know 100%, but I will figure it out. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Trust that person. Because yeah. someone <laughs> just talking out of their head, you know, I don't know yeah. if you trust them or not. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So I did, is there anything else you can think of for this part? No, we have one more left, right? What are we going to do next time? Um... Give us some ideas. Yeah. We need, what do y'all want to hear? We, we want a part three. We're maybe aim for next Wednesday. Perfect. Um, we're going to do a part three, so we'll think of some stuff. But if you have something you we haven't covered yet that you want us to cover maybe in insurance. the field of legal and, fin and financial, yeah, yeah. Um, then yeah, let us know. Drop a, drop a comment. Send us a message, and we will, we will customize our next webinar to what you want to know. Awesome. Are we good? I have a great day. It's, yep. it's happy kind of a day. rainy day. It's, it's going to rain. We're in the woodlands right now. Yeah. I don't know where you are, but we're in the woodlands right now. Um, so great. Have a great day, and, and bye. Bye.